So you've downloaded Forger, you've started sculpting, you're getting an idea of what to do. So I'm going to give you now my top five tips of the features and techniques that I use with Forger every day. So follow these, see what you can do and see if it improves your work. So my top five, let's start with um, number five. Um, this is something that we see in a lot of 3D sculpting programs and it's implemented so well in Forger. So if I'm detailing a, a, a head or a figure or a creature and I want some more surface detail, I could just work on um, single lines and single scratches and scrapes, but it's much better to use a stamp, which is up here. Now, to get those stamps, first of all, you might have a completely blank stamp set there, so you have to make some, first of all. So you can use all sorts of programs, any program that can make a, a, a small image file, like a JPEG, you can, you can use. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do it and where to save it in Procreate. Um, so I'll switch to Procreate. I've made a very small template file here, which is just, it's either 256 by 256 or 512 by 512. I like to keep it really small because I'm always worried about the um, uh, the amount of RAM that, that, that these things use. So I always just keep things nice and simple. And if I need more resolution, then, then I would go up. So I'm just doing, because I want bark, I want a scratchy looking bark, I'm just making simple little lines straight lines, maybe join a couple of them and see what happens with that. You don't have to take any time with this. And then go uh, JPEG, export it, and we, where do we want to save it? So you want to save it to files, and then in your files, you'll get the option to do it on your iPad, find Forger, and then into Stamps. Call it whatever you want it. So I've got a few of these Bark ones, so we'll call it Bark, let's call it 002, done. Now that's saved, it's exported it. So let's go back to Forger. Now in Forger, what's happened here is that one's been added in automatically. So it just pops in. If you if you basically import it in there, it will just, it will just um, arrive in here. So we've got it there and we've got it selected now. You can see it in the, in the top right. So we'll go to clay and then we'll pick an area of clay, pick an area on the model where we can use the clay and we'll just start drawing and see what happens. So straight away, you can see that I'm getting the texture from that, that um, brush. And that instantly makes me faster. Now I've done a few, so you can see why I love it. Let's do a, let's do a fatter one, a, a much thicker one here. Um, so it saves you so much time. So stamp, stamps are one of those things that will just be a lifesaver and that's why it's one of my favorite things in Forger. So that little tip comes in at number five. So my number four tip for Forger is gonna be using images in the background. Uh, when I'm modeling, um, it's a gray one here, uh, just a gray, uh, it's actually a gray image, believe it or not, this isn't the default, but there's plenty of options for me to change that background to something else and, and, and many reasons why I'd want to. So uh, quite often I'd, I'd want a reference in there or I might be doing something that needs maybe a picture of a floor in the background to give me some reference if I'm doing something that's attached to the floor. So let's just have a look at how I would do it and why I would do it. So in the panel at the side, look at resources. And in here, you've got a set of images that I've brought in. So how do we get them in the first place? So down here in the bottom right, you've got photograph, which is obviously gonna take a photograph and you've, you've got the ability to bring in an image like so. And you can bring it in from basically anywhere on your iPad where you've got an album or a, or a, a photo set of photos. So look at all photos. And then in here, let's bring in this one. And then that's given me down here, it's given me this uh, vulture creature. And I've done two different versions of it, as you'll see. I've got this one here, I'll drop it in and show you. We just drag and drop it in the screen. And there we have it in the background. So if you wanted, if that was a creature you were working on, you've got it in the background. Or you could do another thing, which is move to the other one. Let's go to this one further down. 
drag in this one. And then what I've done there is I've just put it in the top corner. Or I could put one here, could put one up at the top right, could do four different ones from different views. And that helps you get your, um, as you're sculpting, that gives you your reference right in the iPad with you there. So you don't need a, a second screen or anything off the screen. And you can try all different types of things. So I work sometimes with a nice circle that just gives me a nice framing. Or I might just work with something like a nice background like so. I'll share some of these backgrounds because I, I keep a lot of these and these are quite useful, uh, especially when you get to the painting stage um, because it just looks like you're in, a, in some kind of an environment. There's no reaction, there's no lighting advantage or anything like that. It simply is your background. Well, that's my number four. So number three on my list um, is painting. So you've got your model. You've got the sculpting done to a level where you're quite happy with it and you just need to put some colour in there now. You've got some really nice surface detail on it and that just needs to be brought out with some nice paintwork. So painting is here on the on the panel. Incidentally, just in case you don't remember, you can move these panels around anywhere that you want just by dragging them. You can literally put it at the, the, the side or the top. So we'll keep it there. And if you don't have the, the buttons in the same order that I've got them, you can simply just hold them down. So we're going to use colour and drag them wherever you want. So we'll put colour at the top. So, so we're going to work with colour. And that's, that's simply a case of just starting to paint on the model. Like so. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And with a large brush, so changing the settings, I can just paint over the whole model with that one colour. And then obviously what you need to do is start improving that by bringing the colour down. So let's desaturate it a little bit. We'll bring the intensity down a little bit and the size down a bit. And then we can start, in fact a bit more, and then we can start adding in some of the highlights and then you build up your layers like this now i've got symmetry on there so we certainly don't want that on we just want to start building it up thinking about how the model colors will build up and then go lighter and lighter and very very quickly you'll get to a point where you, you you've you, you're into the detailing of the model now one thing to improve that one thing that's going to instantly make that better is if i just pick a slightly lighter color and then if we go back and look at our, I think it was number five tip where we made some of these brushes, some stamps, we can take one of those stamps, again, smaller brush, we'll just zoom in. And then not only can you use those stamps for um, the sculpting that we did, but I can now bring that into our painting. And that really starts, even with this just a few minutes, um, you can see why it's one of the in the top five and one of the, you know, you know, not far from the top, because you can really bring your, your model to light with, with to, to life with the colors. Um, and the fact that you can now use all of those stamps that you've made, if you just pick another one, then I'll pick a silly color. Let's just go green on here. Um, let's just do the end of this hair and you can see there I'm using that spatter effect with that stamp combined with the painting so uh, there's lots of options you can you can use in terms of the the, the brush type or the the stamp type and the and the settings and don't forget as well when you're when you're working with this um you can go in here and you could have a look at the let's take the material and you can have a look at the material here and you could knock back the diffuse to be a little bit lighter and you'll see straight away it makes a huge impact on the model. So you might want to do a, a bit of a tweak with the specular highlight. If I go all the way to white, you'll see why you wouldn't want to do this. That's much more metallic looking. So avoid that and just keep it down, certainly in a, in a much more muted tone along the lines of what your model is going to be. And that will give you a much nicer look to paint on. So with a combination of those colours, using the colour brush, the stamps and adjusting the material, you can get exactly what you need. And that's why this is number three on my list. So number two is really 
my number one in some ways. Um, number one that I've picked, I'll show you in a few minutes, is a very, very core feature of Forger. But this layer system, for someone who loves to do characters and pose them, this is one of the best features. So you may be from an After Effects or a, a Photoshop background or a more of a 2D kind of background, and you'll think of layers in a certain way. But in 3D, they're very different. They're, they're almost a way to store changes. So let me give you an example. So just, just check where layers are. So they're, they're in the main um, menu here and go on to layers. And there's nothing in there. So we're going to hit plus, and this is our layer one. So for layer one, we're going to make um, a frown. And what that means is I can pull the model down like so. Just make sure we do it from all angles so we don't lose any volume. Make sure the eye doesn't go into a strange position. And we've got our creature kind of giving a nasty kind of frown there. So that's worked well. We'll go plus and do another one now. So we're now on to um, the next one. And with this one, we'll do the opposite of that. So we'll bring this one up and we'll make this one be a surprise, so a bit bigger. Don't ever let the eyes pop out of the sockets because that's going to break all your realism. Bring the nose up a little bit there. I'll do for now. Just did an undo there because I hit the screen accidentally. I'm just trying to get it so that you can see it close up. Okay, so that's that one done. So I can go back onto layer one, for example, and I can just change the slider. I can go back onto this one, and there you go. So that's the first one we did, and that gives us a nice frown. So you're changing. The, the pose basically and you can always go back to it and that's really useful because you might want to be trying different things and you might not want to commit to it so you might want to go you know you might want to um, try something and then tweak it and tweak it and change it and iterate it so this is where it's quite useful because you can stack up all of your layers so, as you can imagine, um, when you're just exploring and you don't want to commit to anything, this is, this is the way to do it. And once you've, you've done it, um, you, you've finished your model, um, one of the big things to remember is it will only work on the subdivision level that you're at when you make the, the layer. So, make sure your model's all finished and make sure you're on the highest subdivision level for that model when you, when you do finish. And then you'll you won't have any problems with your your layers not working and just keep stacking those layers up when you finish just hit the bottom here the button at the bottom right and it will just freeze it down like so and you could export that one out you can use this for blend shapes or pose morphs for different types of software like maya and cinema 4d and um, just export them out as a as a individual shapes and that's my number two so my number one tip and the number one thing you should learn when you get hold of Forger isn't the sexiest, it isn't the one that will show you the coolest model on the screen or anything like that. It's the utter basics of using remesh. If you don't nail this very early on in the, in the process, you're not going to be good with Forger because you'll always be fighting the system and you'll, be prob you'll have problems with your model. So what do I mean by that? For, so for people who've never done this, let me show you. So you've got a model on the screen. And I'm going to pick just something simple like the uh, move brush with a large brush. And I'm just going to move it up like so. I'm just going to move it around. Now at any given point, we can have a look at the wireframe down here, middle bottom. And we'll go... Um, wireframe on now look at what's happening to my model as i pull anything out the geometry is stretching and that's fine to a point and if you're sculpting a head you won't have many problems with it if i'm doing a big set of cheeks and where the eyes are going to go it doesn't become a problem until you start thinking about doing things like ears so if you want to drag out an ear now 
that's fine you can do it like so but look how the polygons are stretching look how you're getting an issue straight away with the with the twisting what what happens there eventually is if you keep doing that and you keep pulling it and pulling it these polygons here become very um, oddly shaped and it becomes something called a, a non-manifold polygon so polygons will only go so far before they stop displaying correctly so how can we solve that um, let's just switch back to clay for a moment um, and we'll do we'll do a little bit of um, changing it around clay and smooth I'm just trying to get a few more features on the head to show you uh, how it affects these other areas as well so there's a basic head or something that will become a head and this would be this that I'm going to show you applies to every single model every single thing that you do in Forger you'll want to think about this process okay so there's what's going to become like a little head so you can come over here you're on sphere you haven't renamed it it's just the the the, the initial uh, name go on to mesh and you've got a couple of options in here and the one that we're going to focus on is down at the bottom called remeshing and it's got a number 64 in at the moment so watch what happens when i use remesh watch what happens to the ear so we'll hit remesh and instantly it meshes over the top of your old model and gives you a complete average of polygons across the whole model so if you keep pulling that ear out now eventually it'll start doing it again so at that point you can hit remesh again so this is a continuous process in the early stages of blocking out you can use other brushes you can use things like um, another good one would be say inflate so let's move down to the inflate and inflate these ears you can see I'm bulking it up but even the inflate is stretching it and then if we during the the process if we call remesh again you see it now averages it out now what you can do is you can increase that number from 64 let's just try an arbitrary number of 141 hit remesh what that's giving you now is a higher res so combine that with so let's turn it off now you know what's going on underneath we can turn off the wireframe like so carry on sculpting but we're still remeshing so you know what's happening underneath there is that your model is averaging out so at no point are you going to get a pull at no point you're going to get any kind of problem um, I can just basically I can just um, smooth that down now I'm just literally oops done that too aggressively just use I'll actually go into smooth for a moment just to show you what that what that does so let's smooth those ears down smooth that face down and what we want to do is go back and have a look and move this around a bit now so let's have a look keep moving the ears around because we this would be what we would call our blocking phase so there's plenty of scope to to change or everything on the on the, the model here but we want to block it out as fast as we can um, so the remeshing is a is a really crucial part of that so there we go we've blocked out again so let's have a look at it with the wireframe on and you can see there there's a fairly even distribution of polygons right across the model you can go crazy and go super high um, what you get is this so forger has detected a high resolution number this mesh can be remeshed at the given resolution but only if you un if the undo history is flushed is it okay to delete it so what that's going to do is it's going to un it's going to delete out your history and it means that you can't go back from this stage so if you're going to flush it it's going to clear out your memory it's going to help your system but you will lose your undo so so say yes and i wouldn't go this high i did this deliberately to show you but this is this is now quite you know quite a high res mesh and you can see if we turn the wireframe off again if we now wanted to you know do any 
the you know surface work on that so if we were to use something like the crease brush you'll see that we can get quite tight little creases and surface details in there um, because of the fact that we've you know we've we've got such a high resolution mesh and you would only ever really do that right at the end of the process really you wouldn't want to go as high as as high as i've just done there um although you know it's up to you once you start to understand the tools and how how to use them um it is there for you as an option but be careful with it because of the because of what i've just described but learn that process and that will stand you in good stead for everything you do in forger and all of the you know the, the 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 more exciting models that you do but take your time with with anything that you you know any any test models that you do and get that process embedded and that's why that's my number one tool on a feature in forger and it's the one that I, i'd want you to all really focus on